Cup final is guaranteed, but which portion of North London will migrate to the Millennium next month? There are no compromises in the Tottenham selection tonight. Aaron Lennon starts on the wing, Zakora replaces the injured Tainio, and despite his fit of peak when substituted at the weekend, leading scorer Jermaine Defoe keeps his place. Arsenal fielded just two first-team regulars for their spectacular win at Anfield. Toure and Fabregas are joined this evening by a third, Philippe Senderos. The average age of the outfield players is only 21, and there's a welcome first start of the season for Abu Dhabi. Graham Paul takes charge of his fourth North London derby and his second of the season. Here we go then with another glimpse at Arsenal's future. This is the stage where the youngsters have run out of steam in two of the last three seasons. For Spurs, it's all about the present. Well, I think as good as these Arsenal players were, John, and Anfield last round, I think this is the night where Spurs can really show that they're ready to, to realise their potential and seriously challenge for trophies. I think they have to start well and sustain it. The crowd have been whipped up into something approaching a frenzy by the replaying of many great moments from former North London derbies. Gascoigne's FA Cup semi-final goal in the early 90s featured very prominently. Not too many Arsenal winners on display on the giant screens here. is Traore. Encouraging start for the youngest player on the pitch, just three months past his 17th birthday. Arsene Wenger has only ever lost one North London derby. Malbron. Sakura. Here's Chim Bonder, who played against Arsenal in the semi-final last season for Wigan. Aaron Lennon. So exciting. Electrifying burst for the 19-year-old and then Zakora with a shot very well wide. Well, I think that's what Spurs have got to do in a nutshell tonight. Win the ball back by going hungry to close Arsenal down. They did that. Get the ball to people like Lennon because he's got this ability, does extremely well. And, you know, nearly, nearly found Berbatov. Berbatov, really bright start here. Back from Defoe. Lovely from Berbatov! Deserved a better fate. That's what I love about this fella. For a big man, he's got such an exquisite touch. Very unpredictable, great skill, difficult for defenders to deal with. He's not the greatest for his touch, but then a little one too. Lovely link up play with Defoe, and this is great, the way he fills Toure. So unlucky. Spurs, it's Ali Adier and Fabregas angles too tight Dawson clears not very far though and Dawson again in the way from Danielson's follow up I think Robinson's done well because he made Fabregas take an extra touch to take it wider it was a poor ball by Gardner to set all this up Ali Adier seemed to go into a cul-de-sac but you know Robinson's done well to close him down and force him wide with the kick might have caught Danielson Boyd comfortable for Dawson there's Lennon oh he's not just quick he's turbocharged all that was lacking was the ball through to Defoe didn't need to go central, he had Mal Bronk in a good position wide. DRB. And still Abu Diaby. Martin Yol has played in a League Cup semi-final, but it was 25 years ago for West Brom. He'll be delighted with this start. Where did Fabregas spring from? Malbronk. It's already a very pleasing... 
pleasing cut and thrust to this type. shouted to who here but Toure is basically blaming Almunia and Almunia is blaming Toure I bet when this was played in by Defoe Berbatov wasn't expecting it on his head for me Toure has got to do better irrespective of what he hears from Almunia he can see the flight of the ball early I think he's got to deal with it just thought the keeper was going to come whatever's been said between them and Berbatov has been left with a, a simple little header into the net 12 for the season for the 11 million pound man. Big vote of faith placed in the Bulgarian by Martin Yol and how he's repaying it. Ali Adier. Oh, down goes Baptista. Graham Paul had a long, hard look that time. Well, you always look at the player and there's no real complaints from the Brazilian. There is a little bit of contact, goes down soft. Spurs do have an injury problem with their goal scorer Berbatov, that's why Keane is warming up. Benham. Berbatov, Defoe! And again, shouldn't have had a second bite, Malbronk! Took a very hasty bite. Well, more encouragement for Spurs to get the ball forward as, as early as possible. Again, I think this is lovely link-up play between the two strikers. Little dummy from Defoe, that's a gorgeous little ball by Berbatov. Hands up for offside, but Senderos, what's he doing? Well, it only counts as a cameo, but it's been a pretty successful one for Dimitar Berbatov. 17 and a half minutes on the Wise Hart Lane pitch, during which time he has nodded his side in front from Defoe's cross. But he takes his leave through injury, and he's replaced now by Robbie Keane. Asuricotta. Here's Malbronk again. It was knocked shoulder to shoulder, according to referee Graham Paul. It is a Spurs free kick. Well, the fact that he picked himself up again and didn't complain, Malbronk, suggests that it's um, it's a soft decision. Tottenham's way. There is a little bit of contact. I don't think there's anything wrong with that from Danielson. Plenty wrong with it from Arsenal's perspective if this leads to a second Tottenham goal. Stern. Oh, it's an own goal! Julio Baptista scored four of his own at Anfield. Now he's backed another, but it's for Spurs. I think they'll complain about the free kick been awarded for that. Well, it shouldn't have been given for me. It's not even a good delivery from Huddleston. It's dummied by Dawson. Baptista can't see it until too late. And it just hits him and goes into the net. But for me, this is symptomatic of Arsenal at the back. They don't look bright enough. And Tottenham, for me, deserve to have the lead they've got at the moment. Yet the strange part of it is the section of the Arsenal team relatively unaffected by the infiltration of the younger brigade is the defensive line. Toure. sense of injustice burning within Arsenal over the concession of the free kick that led to the second goal it's not a free kick simple as that I think Graham Paul has, has made an error that's the coming together shoulder to shoulder the Nielsen shouldn't have been punished Three giving it every chance this is Chimbonda Zakora oh, that's gonna be the first yellow card of the evening Julio Baptista had it all his own way at Anfield a couple of weeks ago tonight everything appears to be going I wonder, I mean, he's protesting. Does he get the ball? The court tries to turn. He does get a little piece of the ball first. That ball doesn't really work without Berbatov there now. I mean, Spurs really on the balance of play. You couldn't have really denied him a third had Berbatov's gone in and not hit the post early on. Um, Arsenal just haven't got going and they've contributed to the scoreline with, with some bad defensive errors too. Torre. And Fabregas. 
Lewis, who has not scored in his last 32 games. Well, it's been a season for the spectacular in terms of goals, and I thought we might get another one when he hit this, but difficult to execute. Malbronk, Spurs seeking a third. As we move into stoppage time, Lennon. Well, we've seen several bursts from Toure up the pitch, and maybe he feels at fault for the first goal, and he's trying to correct things. I think Spurs can capitalise on that when he's out of that back four. 2 0 is luxurious. 3 0 would be wonderful for Spurs. There's Chimbonda. Some pass. Well, it was the chance. He went at it awkwardly. And that's Dawson. That was a more difficult one because he's ahead of the near post. Always hard to generate the power keep them down Fabregas wins a free kick 30 seconds to play in the first half it's the first period that Arsenal will be glad to forget Traore Arsenal at least will end this first half on the front foot with a corner. Potentially a very important moment in this semi-final. Oh, and Baptista should have scored. And then it really would have been a very important moment. It should be 2-1. He's had a dreadful half, an own goal, a caution, and then a horrible miss in the 47th minute. Well, no wonder the hand is on the head, because he sees this early and he makes a complete hash of it. Should be 2-1. What a golden, golden opportunity to get back in it. Arsenal unbeaten in the last 15 meetings with their closest geographical rivals. Neither side has ever enjoyed as long a period of domination in this fixture, but it's Tottenham's night so far. Two goals up through the departed Berbatov and the crestfallen Baptista. The second half is coming right up. It's Spurs 2, Arsenal 0. Welcome back to the first leg of this Carling Cup semi-final. Graham Pohl has just had to inquire who kicked off the first half before we get the second half underway. The answer was Tottenham, so now it's Arsenal's turn. Tottenham very well placed in this game, leading through Berbatov and a Baptista own goal. However, we are only at quarter distance in the tie overall, and Arsenal have got plenty of room for improvement. That's an understatement. Yeah, they need to start passing the ball much faster, working the ball quicker, John. And Spurs, they just need to start the second half with the same vigour they began the first. No changes in personnel at half-time. Spurs lost Berbatov to a groin injury. Before 20 minutes had been played. By that time, he'd already found the back of the Arsenal net. Lennon's touch for Chimbonda, who's returned the compliment. And Malbronk missed his kick. I don't think he needs to swing at that Malbronk, he can take a touch, he had time. Baptista. Arsenal need to score the next goal, they'll feel that is a prerequisite. The Adi air wide. Well, Dawson did his bit, but in the end he's just trying to, to fool Robinson, not go across him, just look for that near post that goes right through the centre-back, right through his legs. take it they're enjoying themselves and why not it's in excess of seven years since Tottenham last beat Arsenal not wrong. here's a buoy Clare Fabregas Traore. Well, they've had more possession, Arsenal, but still unable to breach. Can't find the incision. Tottenham are making it difficult. Back in numbers.
should have scored in first half stoppage time. Baptista, Mr. Sitter. Fabregas. Oh! Dawson again, this time off the line. The problem with all that, John, is they're too deep to begin with. They're right back on top of the goalkeeper. They've got to push up a little bit. Certainly an uncomfortable moment for the England number one. Here's Clem. Fabregas had his legs taken. Free kick in a position of rich promise now. I mean, just watch where they end up on top of Paul Robinson. It's very difficult for him to get anything clean on it. Dawson reads it brilliantly. The beast. Julio Baptista. That looked like a handball. The follow-up header from Fabregas was comfortable for Robinson. Well, it's difficult because it bounces. It's hard for Fabregas to get something powerful on it. Lennon. It's read by Toure. Kleb. Goes on to give Arsenal a bit of go forward. Fabregas. Eboué. Baptista, Walcott, Baptista! Arsenal are back in this semi-final, and it's their League Cup specialist. Julio Baptista has now scored at both ends. Well, that's easily the best thing he's done tonight, because it wasn't, wasn't going particularly well before now. I just think Tottenham have been getting deeper and deeper, and just affording the initiative. There's well to pick himself up, because he was certainly caught on the edge of the box and it's a lucky touch maybe Dawson felt he should have got more on it tucks it away very well but it's been coming in this second half Clem, the Belarusian Defoe, Keane is offside Oh, close very very close and he knows it Robbie Keane oh, I think he's in line I mean they're always hard for the assistants to call but should have been given the benefit. Fabregas. Kleb. Walcott to Kleb. This is lovely interplay. And Kleb had his shot blocked by Chimbonda. I thought he could have hit it once he got inside the box. Kleb, first time. Now Malbrox lost it. Ibue. A corner. Lack of entertainment here. So the best traditions of this fixture. Fabregas. That was Huddleston. There's to Nielsen. Looked a good effort from here. Struck it really, really well. Robinson always seemed comfortable with it. It was a long, long way. It's got to be all of 30 yards. It's well off target. Chances here for Spurs. Lennon, three waiting. He's teased Traore. It was a super ball in. Dealt with by Hoyt. Robbie Keane. Fabregas. And Huddleston. Penalised. There was the use of a hand in there. Well, I thought it was going to be Tottenham's third. It was a brilliant ball around the corner by Keane to begin with. And this is superb. Inexperience from Traore. It's a great ball across. I expect the foe on it. Chris passing from Arsenal. Oh, it's shortly to be replaced. See Matteo Flamini. we on the far touch line, ready to come on. But here is Hoyt. And there's Baptista! It's brilliant for Arsenal. I mean, the run from Hoyt. I wonder will he be substituted now? I'm not so sure. The pass to find them, 
and then what a delivery into Baptista. But look at Fabregas, head up. The run comes from so deep. Tottenham's back four, not in line. And once he's in this position, it's head up. Can he pick someone out? Baptista does well to make the ground up, tucks it away brilliantly, and his nice is getting better and better. Fantastically worked goal, but Spurs have lost their way second half. He had an awful first half. He's having an awesome second. Here's Lennon. His pace can still hurt Arsenal. Showed too much to Hoyt. Chimbonda. Clever's pulled up. And Defoe had a chance to put Tottenham back in front. Has he got a touch on this, Almuni? I think he might have. I think Defoe, rather than go around him, I think he tries to flick this over him and go for goal. I, I thought Almunia came out so quickly, I thought he could have taken it round. It's a good stop by the goalkeeper to push it wide. That's a fine save. But I think he was there to go around. Has Tottenham's chance gone? It's going to be mighty difficult at the Emirates, where Arsenal have yet to lose. Fabregas. And Walcott, a yard away from his first Gunners goal. Oh, well, he should be at least hitting the target. I mean, to be honest, I think he even has enough time maybe to take a touch on this. That is a great opportunity. And he should have done better, he knows it. I mean, straight away the head went down and he might be young, but what a chance. Lennon. He slipped Traore. That was Flamini. And Graham Paul consults his watch, not for the first time. Here's Baptista. Three minutes of stoppage time played. Sakura took ball, not man. It has been a super game. And it is definitely advantage Arsenal. Tottenham dictated the first half. Arsenal bossed the second. And in no player was the turnaround more pronounced than in Julio Baptista. That early own goal followed by both Arsenal's second half strikes of recovery. Spurs still can't beat Arsenal, even with a two-goal start. And we will reconvene at the Emirates in a week's time with the score at 2-2. As at Anfield, it was Fabregas who pulled the strings, particularly in the second half, and Baptista, who got most of the goals. Reaction to that two-all draw comes next. It's been a long time since you beat Arsenal. Should you have beaten them tonight? If we would have played the second half like we did the first half, we would have probably. And, and, and we had a great chance with Steve Marbank to score the third one. But we didn't control the game, you know, in the, in the second half. We gave it away. We have shown uh, talent, but as well heart and uh, exceptional uh, togetherness and solidarity. And uh, that's great, you know. It seems that young and they know no fear. Would you agree? Yeah, that's the thing, you know, I mean, I don't know how they do it in this club, but they always find the right young players that they, they, they don't, they are not scared about anything. Look at the Nilsson song when they play, the Abbey, he was coming back from nine months uh, out and he did really well once again. Theo Walcott, you can see how great they are, so, I mean, it's quite amazing, yeah. Will you stick with this same young set of players for the second leg? Well, mainly, yes. Uh, they want to go into the final. They, will, they deserve to achieve that, and I'm sure they can achieve it. I still feel that we are in with a chance, you know, because it's, it's a one-off game. Uh, they've got to score, and uh, if we score a goal, you know, that, uh, that will be nice as well. The final point, Julio Baptista had been booked. Then he did make a yellow card gesture when Defoe was booked, which technically is a yellow card. Some at Tottenham might feel that Julio Baptista was lucky to be on the field at that point. Maybe, uh, I don't know, I didn't see that, but uh, he had not to do that. Anyway, we do not like uh, to get players to be booked, you know, and uh, he got away with it. I will explain that to him. Mm, well, one way or another, Julio Baptista was uh, centre stage mm. again. 
And it was a great cup tie, that's yeah. the first thing to say. There was an awful lot to, uh, to enjoy and appreciate on that pitch at White Hart Lane. Yeah, it was a great game of football and, and not least um, the character really, the, this Arsenal's team. They stamped their authority up at Liverpool when we saw you know, them go ahead and, and run the game. But today, two goals behind, mm. they could have gone the other way, but again, they, they showed their ability. Great athletes, great technical ability, but they're showing they've also got the character as well. Well, perhaps we, we, we wondered about Rafael Benitez in the game at Liverpool was mm -hmm. why didn't you pick a stronger, a more first-team 11 yeah. to knock the precious talent mm -hmm. of Arsenal's youth team over? Martin Yol almost did that in the first half here. He did. He went with, with, his, with his big big strikers, particularly in, uh, in Berbatov and Defoe. His, his main two seem to be the two that have emerged from the pack. And what I particularly liked about this, the start of the game, it, these two combined, and that's what, what good front play is about, looking for each other. You'll see this is great play, run over from Defoe, a lay-in from, from Berbatov, and it's really only the angle that stops uh, Defoe getting, getting his chance at goal. And, and when you get a good strike pair, they almost look for themselves in the box. And this is Defoe out wide, he crosses, I mean, Toure gets under it and doesn't do particularly well, but it's a decent head of this from Berbatov. And the only thing that I'd say is he falls slightly awkwardly there, you'll see. And we believe that might be the groin injury that may keep him out of the second leg. But they started the game so well, and I have to say it was a big loss for, for Tottenham when Berbatov got substituted. And talking of starts, having had the dream game really at Anfield, mm -hmm. Julio Baptista had a custard pie the first half at he was probably still thinking about the four goals from the last <laughs> leg because he didn't quite get to grips with the first off. This was him to challenge on Zakora, and um, he's saying that he, he got the ball. You'll see here, he gets plenty of the player first as well, and he's got to understand with the man from Tring, you, once he's given you a yellow, you're not getting away from it. This, I thought, also a little unlucky. Danielson on Mel Bronk. I, I thought that wasn't a foul, but he gets himself in all kinds of mess here. Dawson does well going across the ball, but Baptista does, you know. Centre forwards defending, goes in, and he probably thought he can't get any worse than that. A couple of minutes before half time, it did. I mean, this is a guilt as chance. As a man who's been in decent form in front of goal, left foot, right foot away, he probably doesn't know how it didn't go in, and he's almost glad to get in at half time. Yes, and, and probably they all were, and, and it would appear from what was said afterwards that at mm. half time, a good deal of talking was done yeah. in the Arsenal dressing room and, and as Arsene Wenger said there's not just talent in this team no. but there's passion and commitment and, and sometimes belief. Sometimes it's just about reminders. What happened in the second half, Arsenal back off. They st uh, sorry, Tottenham, Tottenham started off. to back off and Arsenal got more into the game, started to create space and this is how I felt the first goal came. It's decent interplay here between Walcott and Baptista in the end but you'll see Tottenham are so deep. All of a sudden spaces have occurred and Baptista picked himself up it's a nice clinical finish into the corner of the net. And, and once they were back into the game, you start to feel they were going to come in. The second goal's got a lot to appreciate. Zakora here just sits off Fabregas. His job to get in front of the Arsenal man, stop him playing, affect the way he's going to deliver the ball. He doesn't. You'll see Fabregas can pick his pass. He does that ever so well. Gets Hoyt in on the run, and Baptista makes up the ground and gets a second goal. And, and this just shows you the movement map that I talked about. Hoyt's the man who's going to make the run. Abue is, is the winger he comes inside and he draws a cutter with him and then you'll see what happens with Hoyt he sees the space it's a rotation movement they get him in and once he's away Tottenham are always in trouble and Baptista gets there and really it's a simple finish in the end but it just shows the, the belief and the character in this young team that they don't know when they're beaten and that's what Arsene Wenger's trying to instill in them if they're going to make it into the, the big first 11. It's often interesting isn't it with Arsenal goals I think lots lots of us that appreciate the, the niceness of the way Arsenal play as, as viewers and, and punters, if you like, they look so simple, the goals, you think they ought to be easy to defend, and yet the slower sometimes you watch them, the more you break them down, the more you appreciate the finer points of Arsenal why it looks so simple. Arsenal a brilliant way of the wide players ask questions of the fullbacks. The, the wingers come inside and the, they say to the fullback, if you want to come with me, then fine, the, the fullback will get in. If you don't come with me, I'll have the ball. And because they ask you so many questions, you don't really know the answer. Yeah. Now, small margins always in, in games uh, of this magnitude in lots of football games. And there was a decision that went against Tottenham yeah. for Robbie Keane that just might have changed the game. Crucial time of the game as well. This is a 2-1. We, we get a chance to see this. Keane makes a run off Senderos. We'll clearly see as, as we drop down into 3D. He's clearly on side. Linesman's got a good view of it. He should be making a better decision because as this ball gets played through, Keane's onside and he's in on, in on goal. And this could have been 3-1. But instead, flag goes up. 
it's ruled offside and all of a sudden at 2-1 it's a different game so those are sometimes the margin that you know that games are balanced on indeed finish 2-2 but how do you see the second leg arsenal yeah. you would think favorites strong favorites it was interesting when mr wenger said mainly the same team he'll just bring back on me gilberto and Mazzicchi, which probably. Is, to be fair what he did against wigan he did last it. year and it didn't pay off so no, but i think he'll go a little bit strong in the next one sometimes you do what's well, second leg at the Emirates Stadium on Wednesday. Of the 10 outfield players, six were aged under 21 with an average age of 20 years and seven months. No sign of nerves as they arrived at White Hart Lane. They may be the understudies. Some of them only get a run out in the cup competitions, but there's little doubt that Arsenal's youngsters are more than ready for the big time. The, the last team that did this was Manchester United under Alex Ferguson when Scholes, Giggs, Beckham, Nicky but they all came to prominence, they all came superstars. And as people said then, you can't win anything with kids. Well, you can. You win it with talent. A 2-0 down, many senior sides would have folded. Arsene Wenger's carefully cultivated crop of near teenagers simply tore into Tottenham and cut them to pieces. You know, it's a shame, from an English point of view, that there aren't more English players involved in it. But you can do nothing but admire the production line and the skill and the, the commitment and ability of the players that are being produced at the moment. Baptista, the veteran of 25, may have grabbed the headlines. The rest of this young squad may be doing that for years to come. This Arsenal team, when they play well, is the best football I've ever seen in my lifetime. You can criticise all you like for the, when, they, when they don't win the prizes, but ultimately what he's building is going to be absolutely fantastic. They could even have won it if Walcott's uninhibited half volley had been on target. We play attractive football, high tempo, scoring goals, creating chances. Uh, a joy to watch. Whenever Arsenal, have, I'm sure I'm the same as everyone else. When you see Arsenal live on television or games on, I'll make sure I'm sitting in front of the telly watching it. Uh, it's very rare they'll switch off an Arsenal game. So it's an exciting prospect, not just for Arsenal fans. Wenger's new generation could well mature into a side capable of winning trophies as well as tributes. Peter Stones, Sky Sports. Now to a former Arsenal youngster, David Bentley, who's now at Blackburn. Bentley was part of the side that lost. There's players all around the world. There's just players from everywhere, South America, Asia, all over Europe. And it was really good education of, of what football is. I mean, across the world. Like, I mean, technically, I learned a lot. But I mean, the know-how of football and, and knowing what it's all about. Given a slightly better aim, Walcott could have given his team an unlikely victory. But for Arsenal fans, the long-term future looks bright after trailing in Chelsea's wake for two seasons. Peter Stones, Sky Sports. Well, most clubs will be casting an envious eye towards Wenger's current crop of youngsters. Here's a closer look at some of them. The jewel in the crown is undoubtedly Cesc Fabregas. He made the most appearances in all competitions last season, and he's made the most appearances this time around too. Hard to believe he's still only 19. He became Arsenal's youngest ever player when he made his debut aged 16 years and 177 days, and midfielders already racked up 14 caps for Spain. Emmanuel Abue is now the club's first choice right back after dislodging Lauren. The attacking fullback joined Arsenal after they took advantage of their close relations with Beveren, paying just over a million for him. He played every minute of the Ivory Coast three games at the World Cup. Justin Hoyts forced his way into the first team after spending last season on loan at Sunderland. The versatile 23-year-old fullbacks made 24 appearances in all competitions this season. His brother Gavin is a member of Arsenal's youth team. The midfielder, Denilson, could be the next one to break through into the first team. He's played six times so far this season after joining from Sao Paulo for £3 million in August. He's Brazil's under-19 captain. Armon Traore is just 17 and joined Arsenal from Monaco in the close season last summer. He's got the highest squad number, 45, and the defender made his debut at West Brom in the third round of the League Cup. Theo Walcott is one of their brightest prospects and he became the world's most expensive 16-year-old when he signed for a fee that could reach £12 million. 23 appearances so far and he's the youngest player ever to play for England. 
Johan Juru has impressed with a string of fine performances at centre-half since Sol Campbell left the club. No longer a teenager as he turned 20 last week, but he's already played eight times for Switzerland. And Alexandre Song is 19 and signed for nearly £3 million from the French side Bastia. He can play in midfield and defence. An interesting fact, he's Rigobert Song's nephew. Well, I think it's interesting. <laughs> so how do Arsenal find all these talented youngsters? They have seven Europe-wide scouts. That's fewer than other big clubs because they buy fem fewer players. Well, these youth scouts report to the chief scout, Steve Rowley, who was appointed by Wenger in 1996. He's actually been at the club for 27 years. Well, he briefs manager Wenger on a daily basis. Wenger has total faith in his scouts. Only the scouts recommend players to the club. The managerial staff do not ask the scouts to look at youngsters. Young prospects aged 14 plus are watched at least 10 times. Each of the seven youth scouts see the players in action at least once. And the key principle in signing young talent, they must be ready for immediate first team action. Arsenal feel this makes it easier to sign them as they're guaranteed senior football. There's only way, uh, two ways that Spurs can get to the final in Cardiff. That's if Arsenal fail to show up completely next time, or if they get a bye. They've got no chance. They blew <laughs> it completely. Probably they must be one. kicking themselves today. They must be absolutely kicking themselves. First of all, Arsenal turn up late, say, any chance of putting the kick-off back 15 minutes? Should have said, absolutely no chance. That was mistake number one. Mistake number two was throwing away a 2-0 lead at home in the first leg of a semi-final. Absolutely and, unforgivable. And no way back. And changing it tactically as well, Kerry, didn't they? Yes, they did. I, I couldn't understand the formation. Whatever Arsene Wenger said to his team at half-time, the transformation in two halves was incredible. I, I've got to say that the Arsenal kids did, did them, their team absolutely did them so proud. It was, uh, it was a fantastic second-half performance by them. Why does he take, uh, when Berbatov has to go off, why does he put a little in on? Oh, no, no. Why don't you put the Mido's on the bench? Why doesn't he put Mido on so you've got the same setup. There must have been working on a, a system where you play the ball up to Berbatov, he can flick it on or he can hold it up, lay it off or well, whatever. It was working, and then it, it went was, completely out the window. It was working perfectly for them. And the other yeah. thing that, that he's got to be thinking is that they are a young side. If they go 3-0 down, then you've perhaps got yeah. a chance of breaking their spirit. You know, It's a situation they won't have been in before. Yeah. And so it seems unbelievable that he was willing to sit back, bring on Keane and just muck around. And you've, you saw in the last round against Liverpool what happens if you let that team attack you. Mm -hmm. They scored six. Liverpool scored three great goals. Mm -hmm. The only problem was that young Arsenal team scored six. So we know there's a capability of scoring goals in it. So the last thing you want to do is sort of invite them on. Once a team has got momentum up, though, it's very hard to sort of change the way the game's going. And that, that happened to Arsenal. They got momentum up early in the second half and they just believed every time the ball came into the midfield areas, they were picking up the loose ball and, and putting uh, Tottenham on the back foot. And, you know, the Tottenham just couldn't turn it around in the second half. Are they not the sort of t side that could sit there and, and hold on to that two-goal lead? Do you think they were still chasing the game too much once they come back in, what one goal had come back? Or do you think it was always going to... Uh, roller coaster from there. I don't really know because you look at tactics of certain people. I mean, Chelsea do it to a degree. They they used to get a goal up and sit back and keep possession yeah. of the ball. And you know, sometimes the game becomes a little bit tedious. But why Tottenham did that is, is beyond me. Unless they felt that uh, they could hold out Arsenal. They've done the job. They've done the hard work. Sit on sit on what we've got. The two 0 lead. But uh, sadly for them, it backfired, and they're going to have to have different tactics in the second leg. 